In this video, we're going to talk about the Black and Scholes option pricing model. Now, this model can actually be applied to some more complicated kinds of questions. It can be applied to the options in capital budgeting um, and, and a lot of other variety of issues where you have the opportunity to make choices between whether to do something or not to do something, right? I mean, that's the essence of an option. So in this example, we have a stock that is selling for $100. This stock has a 50% standard deviation, and the number of years to expiration, this is the number of days divided by 365. In this case, it's 0.25, so it's got... 20, uh, uh, a quarter of a year, right? So this is one quarter. The exercise price of this particular option is $95. Risk-free rate is 10%. And in this example, we're going to assume there is no dividend yield. Now, there could be dividend yield. We could incorporate whatever we want in there for dividend yield. In fact, let's make this a little bit more realistic. Let's make it more current, right? So we've got a 3% risk-free rate, right? And um, again, we'll, we'll keep everything else the same. 3% is the current risk-free rate. Now, if you remember, the formulas for the Black Controls model are fairly complex. And I don't have them written here because of their uh, complexity, but... Um, we're ultimately trying to calculate what we refer to as D1, D2. This helps us set the probability that the stock option or the extra, or the value of the stock and that the uh, strike of the stock, that they, uh, that they occur. So, so the N, D1, this is the normal distribution. Um, again, this is a pretty simple formula here. It's just equals, oh, oops, sorry, I can't do that. Um, it's just a norm, dist, and then the value of D1 will calculate that value for you. So in this instance, we end up with a call price of $12.78, and the put price is $7.07. Now let's see what would happen if we put dividend yield in here. Let's say that there's a dividend yield of 4%. What would that do to the call price and the put price? You see the call changed. The call changed to 12, oops, sorry, to $12.15. It increased. Why? Because now there's an additional cash flow that could occur and there's a probability of that occurrence. And of course, the dividend is in our formula for um, calculating this value. But let's also explore some of the other variables. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. What happens if this stock becomes more risky or if it is, let's just say less risky because it's already a pretty high number. If the standard deviation was only 25%, how would that affect the value of the call price and the put price? Well, let's see if we can think this through first. Standard deviation measures the volatility of the stock. The more volatile the stock, the more likely the price will move in a direction that is good for you. So if we have less risk, we would hope that we see lower prices because they have less value. So let's make this 25%. And you can see that they both went down 8.22, 2.51. Okay, so now let's change this scenario. We have this less risk type of stock. Now let's think about the time to expiration. If we increase the time to expiration, what that means is there's more chance that what we think is gonna happen will actually 
happen. So obviously that's good for us. So we would have think that that's going to positively affect the values of these options. It's more likely they'll come true. So let's change this to a half a year. And we'll see what? Both, both values went up. What about the risk-free rate? If the risk-free rate increases or decreases, how does that affect the value of the stock? Again, this ultimately affects the present value calculations in our formula. So let's just say that it goes to five, whoops, not that. Let's go to 5%. So what's going to happen if it goes to five, oops, I'm sorry, not 500%. 5%, oh, let me go so we see the change. It's it's at 3%, it was what, 10 and 4. Now if we go to 0.05, where's that, what's that going to do? Again, it increased both of them. What happens if the strike price changes? Now it doesn't change, but for a particular stock, there are numerous exercise prices available. So what happens if the strike price falls and goes to 90? Well, think about this. Which one is this going to positively impact? Again, the call price, we want to exceed the exercise price. So what that's going to do, the call price should go up, but the put price should go down. So if we change that to 90, We'll see that the call goes to 14 and the price fell to $2.50. So the variables within here obviously have a great deal to do with the valuation of options. Now, one of the things that we can use here, we can use the goal seek function, right? Because what we really might want to do, because we know a lot about the stock, right? We know all of this information. The thing that we really don't know is the standard deviation, right? So again, if we want to solve and find out what, do the, what does the current data imply about the stock's risk, we can do that using the goal seek function. And we can search for the implied uh, standard deviation of the stock. And again, you have some instructions here that will guide you through that particular um, that particular process. Hope you liked the video. Goodbye.